if I were to ask you, or any random person, who was the most brilliant man of the modern era, what would be the answer? The answer, of course, for most people, would be Albert Einstein. He is viewed as the man who changed mathematics and the way we perceive the universe. Most of the now widely accepted work in higher mathematics after Einstein was based on his theories. What if I were to tell you that there was another man that lived when Einstein did? A man who accomplished more than Einstein could dream of. A man who challenged all the theories Einstein proposed. A man whom Einstein actually agreed with in 1920. But this fact seems to go largely unnoticed. This man has been accused of all sorts of things. He was accused of everything from being a mad scientist to being some kind of wizard, and was seen as a heretic to modern science and mathematics. He was villainized in 1941 through cartoons. In the first of Max Fleischer's Superman cartoons, Superman fought a mad scientist bearing this man's name. There are many quotes of his that contradict other quotes so much so that it's hard to know if some of them are real. This man is someone whom science wanted to forget, and whom all bankers of the time cut off funding to. This man died penniless and alone, with only pigeons to keep him company. One of his last projects was a new theory of gravity. According to FBI documents acquired via the Freedom of Information Act request, the sum of this man's possessions consisted of about two truckloads of material and approximately 30 barrels and bundles which were seized upon his death in 1943 by agents of the now defunct Office of Alien Property Custodian. One document states that it is reported to have some 80 trunks in different places containing transcripts and plans having to do with experiments. This man's research was seen as so dangerous that it has never been declassified by the government. This man was a physicist with more formal training in the field than Albert Einstein, who was a patent clerk. This man had a photographic memory and spoke six languages. He showed genius at an early age and was able to perform integral calculus in his head though his teachers thought him to be cheating. Did he accomplish anything with this genius? This one man invented radio, AC power, which is used worldwide today, laser, radar, x-ray, wireless communication, particle beam weaponry called Star Wars technology, which has only recently been admitted by our government in a video I will link to you wireless electricity, which has only recently been replicated, and poorly, I might add, by the self-proclaimed geniuses at MIT, cellular technology, the electron microscope, microwave technology, hydroelectric generators, neon lights, fluorescent lights, brushless synchronous and induction motors, bladeless turbine and pump, remote control, electronic robotics, just to name a few. He predicted things like the Blackberry in 1909. Before the 1900s, he demonstrated remote control boats. Who was this man? Nikola Tesla. Why was this man so dangerous? Tesla said things like this about Einstein's work. It is a magnificent mathematical garb which fascinates, dazzles, and makes people blind to the underlying errors. The theory is like a beggar, clothed in purple, whom ignorant people take for a king. Its exponents are brilliant men, but they are metaphysicists, meaning they deal with the supernatural, rather than scientists. Supposing that the bodies act upon the surrounding space, causing curving of the same, it appears to my simple mind that the curved spaces must react on the bodies, and producing the opposite effects, straightening out the curves. 
Since action and reaction are coexistent, it follows that the supposed curvature of space is entirely impossible. But even if it existed, it would not explain the motions of the bodies as observed. Only the existence of a field of force can account for the motions of bodies as observed, and its assumption dispenses with space curvature. All literature on this subject is futile and destined to oblivion. So are all attempts to explain the workings of the universe without recognizing the existence of the ether and the indispensable function it plays in the phenomena. My second discovery was a physical truth of the greatest importance. As I have searched in the entire scientific records in more than a half a dozen languages for a long time without finding the least anticipation, I consider myself the original discoverer of this truth, which can be expressed by this statement. There is no energy in matter other than that received from the environment. Today's scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments, and they wander off through equation after equation and eventually build a structure which has no relation to reality. Now what is the ether? Some think of it as a firmament, which our universe exists within. Yes, just like the firmament spoken of in the Bible book of Genesis. Tesla said a good example for such an interaction becomes apparent in gravitation, which should rather be named universal compression. I think the material bodies do not gravitate between each other, but it is the ether that makes one material body to press to another. We wrongly call this phenomenon gravitation. The stars, planets, and all the universe appeared from the ether when some part of it, due to certain reasons, became less dense. Einstein's theories were based on the non-existence of the ether. What is not presented much in media is that Einstein himself doubted his theories on multiple occasions. In 1920 he said, but on the other hand, there is a weighty argument to be adducted in favor of the ether hypothesis. To deny the ether is ultimately to assume that empty space has no physical quality whatsoever. The fundamental facts of quantum mechanics do not harmonize with this view. Recapitulating, we may say that according to the general theory of relativity, space is endowed with physical qualities. In this sense, therefore, there exists an ether. According to the general theory of relativity, space without ether is unthinkable. For in such space, there not only would be no propagation of light, but also no possibility of existence for standards of space and time, measuring rods and clocks nor therefore any space-time intervals in the physical sense. Media presents the idea of Einstein-based mathematics as fact. We are told that this is concrete and that the entire scientific community is in total agreement. This could not be farther from the truth. In fact, calling it mathematics at all is misleading. These are theories with no absolutes. There are two divided camps, one that believes there is an ether and one that doesn't. All we are presented with on television is the theories that rely on no ether existing and then replacing the ether with things like dark matter to try to make all the theories work. So what is modern science? The belief in theories based on a man who doubted his own theories which incorporate dark matter which these scientists are not even sure exists. What am I trying to say here? Science does not give you or have all the answers. When you hang on every word of people like Stephen Hawking, know that there are many people whom are just as brilliant who completely disagree with them.